What is up, everybody? Solomon here. I think that I have quite the interesting little bit of a deep dive for you guys today. So we're going to talk about the Volcker rule and the implications that that has for digital currency, blockchain, cryptocurrency, blockchain companies, and most importantly, what we're all here for, digital assets. Very, very interesting things that I found. I found a couple of things. I found reference points for Ripple um, that correlate directly to what I believe is a direct opening of the door that has just been released by um, all of these institutions at large and the regulators. So I want to dive in first, uh, about five minutes, real quick news here. Uh, this is BRD, uh, that's the wallet that is uh, also integrated with PayID, I believe, integrated today with Hedera Hashgraph to drive enterprise adoption of scalable, secure, and faster DLT. This was interesting. This is Shatner on the Wax blockchain. Um, William Shatner is crossing a new tech frontier with the release of trading cards on Wax blockchain. Product specifications for each card, including the date it was created, its rarity, images of the card, proof of authenticity. This reminds me of like CryptoKitties. So I'm sure that there's probably a market for it. Um, not really for me right now. Uh, maybe that's a mistake. Who knows? MoneyGram rolling out payment system in Asia. Are Ripple and XRP ready for launch? Um, XRP has been ready for launch. So MoneyGram is expanding its remittance business across Southeast Asia. Leading payments company launched an online presence in Singapore in Febu February. Head of Asia Pacific and South Asia tells Digital News Asia that the company is now exploring whether it should bring MoneyGram at the MoneyGram app to Malaysia. Also, Global Money Express, I posted this a couple days ago, um, partnered with MoneyGram. Directly benefit uh, customers from South Korea to China and South Asia. So we know ODL slowed down though, so I'm curious to see how that goes. Star Capital customers now enjoy the largest cryptocurrency selection. XRP is included if you happen to be a member of Star Capital. Alibaba joins IPCSA's blockchain bill of lading initiative. I'm sure there's some sort of a tie-in here to potentially Ripple. I did not do a deeper dive into this. Um, the Volcker rule information that came out today was much more interesting and much more worth my time. So this was actually very interesting. This is from citizen.org. This talks about crypto mining and DMG and just tells you where we're going. Um, I am a firm believer that proof of work is not going to be sustainable, even in the medium term. I think in the short term, for sure, you're going to see price, price influxes and everything else. But in the medium term, I believe that this is going to be outlawed. Mining is going to be banned, in my opinion, uh, at some point, just because of it's it's horrible for the environment and i'm not a super you know let's let's care for the environment type guy but i realize there, there's there's a line in the sand with that type of stuff too so crypto mining is a extraordinary uh, extraordinarily energy intensive it actually goes down global power demand for cryptocurrency mining a sector arguably still in its infancy in its infancy this is how bad it is is estimated to be have been as high as 7,670, I guess that's megawatts in 2018, or it's probably more than megawatts, equivalent, equivalent to nearly 1% of all US electricity generating capacity. This is ridiculous. That's 2018. Where do you think that goes? That definitely ends well, right? Uh, Boku partners with LinePay Japan to enable e-wallet payments to merchants. If you're not aware, LinePay, um, also is partnered with uh, SBI Japan um, for MoneyTap, which obviously is going to be utilizing, I, I know portions of it utilize XRP at this point right now. Um, I, this paints the picture, and this is not anywhere in the deep dive. This was just news that came out today. A leading global, this is Boku, a leading global provider of money, a mobile payment and mobile identity solutions is pleased to announce a partnership with LinePay, one of Japan's largest e-wallet and QR code payment uh, service providers. More than 37 line pay users to pay for merchants, digital goods, and services through the Boku platform. I looked up Boku platform a little bit here, and I found, hold on. It talks about bank-capable bank capable, um, platform, basically. 
you guys can look up Boku Pay though. I'm this this again is not really part of the the big deep dive here. So, but it's 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 good. It's adoption. I mean, it's it's more partnerships. It's more available availability for Rails. Everything else. So, um, subscription pro- product. All right, I'm gonna move on from that. Bank regulators to ease up on the Volcker rule. Next up are the stress test results. This is what we're all here for today, ladies and gentlemen. In my opinion. So if you like it, great. If not, fantastic. But this is where we start the deep dive. Bank investors bracing for bad news Thursday got at least a dose of something positive. Regulators eased up restrictions on risk taking put forth following the financial crisis of 2008, 2009. And here is uh, what we get into. This is what the Volcker rule is. And many people in the digital asset community believe that modifications to the Volcker rule allow for banks to hold custody and utilize digital assets. I think that may be a little bit obtuse, but I do think that it opens the doors for some very interesting things that are going to happen in the very near future. So if you're not aware, um, I'm just going to read the first sentence here because covered funds is what we're really paying attention to here. The Volcker Rule is a federal regulation that generally prohibits banks from conducting certain investment activities with their own accounts and limits their dealings with hedge funds and private equity funds, also called covered funds. Pay attention and please remember covered funds. So this is from Milbank here. Um, We last wrote about how the Volcker Rule's ban on proprietary trading impacts the ability of banking entities to buy and sell certain cryptocurrencies. We now turn to how the other primary component of the Volcker Rule, the limitation on investing in or sponsoring covered funds, pay attention to covered funds, and these the covered funds just means covered under the, Vol- uh, the Volcker Rule, um, for my research that I've done over the past however long, may impact the ability of a banking entity to make equity investments in certain financial technology companies. The covered fund prohib- prohibitions of the Volcker Rule can be seen as an attempt to achieve indirectly what the proprietary trading ban achieves directly. This is getting a little bit heavy there, but all right. I found by doing some digging, this is from 20, this is 2015, I think. It talks about Ripple being a covered fund. Remember, covered fund, as far as the Volcker Rule is concerned, is not a good thing. If Ripple were to be considered an investment company that would not qualify for an exemption under 3B1, or any other exemption other than section 3C1 or 3C7, because 3C1 and 3C7 exemptions, from my understanding, don't matter. Um, It would only escape characterization as a covered fund if it were otherwise excluded from that definition by the Volcker Rule. A lot of verbiage there. So what was interesting to me, though, as I went and looked today, and the um, Federal Reserve put out a new document about the Volcker Rule. Um, And I believe that there is an expiration of October 1st or something on this. This is the final ruling though. I believe it still needs voted on. What's really interesting is if you pay pay attention, additional covered fund exclusions. So these are exclusions to the Volcker Rule, which basically open up the doors for banks to pretty much do what they want under a certain set of guidelines. Now, customer facilitation vehicles is what really stuck out to me. I did a very big search on this. Customer facilitation vehicles didn't exist in the verbiage of the Volcker Rule anywhere before 2020. This just started in January. And if you read about through customer facilitation vehicles like we're about to do, there is a lot of verbiage in there that is very interesting. This section 3B1 or section 3C1 and 3C7 where they directly mention in this bank uh, website as far as Ripple to be Uh, considered a covered fund, which is not a good thing, um, was directly called out in this section. And it also talks about customers wanting to use covered funds. So exemptions are going to be there um, for payments, clearing and settlement services, which is a newer thing here. I'm going to read through this. I'll try to explain it as the best as best I can. Anybody that has a background in any of this, please feel free to reach out. I'm not trying to be hypey. I'm not trying to say this is XRP. I'm just providing you the information that I found, and it correlates very similarly to the Ripple document that it talks about covered funds. So finally, this new rule adopts two exclusions for family wealth management, okay, and customer facilitation vehicles to provide banking entities 
flexibility to provide advisor, advisory and other traditional banking services to customers through a fund structure. I'm going to keep reading here. I hope I don't miss anything because this is a long document. Um, all right, let me go to the next one. Customer facilitation vehicles. This is what this is what really piqued my interest. The agencies are adopting an exclusion from the definition of covered fund under subsection 10B of the rule for any issuer that acts as a customer facilitation vehicle. The customer facilitation vehicle exclusion will, as proposed, be available for any issuer that is formed by or at the request of a customer of a banking entity for the purpose of providing a customer with exposure to a transaction, an investment strategy, or another service provided by a banking entity. A banking entity may rely on the exclusion with respect to an issuer provided that all of the ownership interests of the issuer are owned by the customer, e.g., what if, a, what if one of the customers holds digital assets and the banking ent entity or its affiliate, affiliates? Maintain documentation outlining how the banking entity intends to facilitate the customer's exposure to such transaction, investment strategy, or service. Do not directly or indirectly guarantee, assume, or otherwise ensure the obligations or performance of such issuer and comply with disclosure obligations. I'm going to scroll through this a little bit. I realize this is dry, but I think it's extremely important. And I think it's, it's obviously not black and white to all of us because they talk in such verbi verbiage, rhetoric-fueled whatever just to try to hide all this stuff. But um, all right, let me roll them down here. Hold on. Okay. Um, as, as of such issue or recovered fund, provide that the content, content may be modified to prevent the disclosure from being misleading and the manner of disclosure may be modified to accommodate the specific circumstances of the issuer. This is another, this is another caveat here. Do not acquire or re uh, retain as principal an ownership interest in the issuer other than up to an aggregate 0.5% of the issuer's outstanding ownership interests for the purpose of and to the extent necessary for establishing corporate separateness or addressing bankruptcy. That to me is saying that a bank can't hold more than 5% of whatever this, um, this customer facilitation vehicle or the entity that provides it, they can't hold more than 50 or 0.5% of, uh, of the stock or whatever you wanna call it. So if we go down here though, it, it does talk about this. So Go back to this real quick. Ripple, a covered fund. Any other exemption other than under section 3C1 or, C, or 3C7? This is where we start getting interesting and start getting a little bit less dry and a little bit more easy to understand, I hope. The agencies continue to believe that this exclusion will appropriately allow banking entities to structure certain types of services or transactions for customers or to otherwise provide traditional customer-facing banking and asset management services through a vehicle, even though such a vehicle may rely on Section 3C1 or 3C7. Even though such a vehicle may rely on Section 3C1 or Section 3, 3C7. Any other exemption other than Section 3C1 or 3C7 in this Ripple document here from the bank? Most commentators that address this exclusion, uh, this exclusion were supportive, stating that would provide banking entities with greater flexibility to meet client needs and objectives, and we get into payments and settlements down here. Some commentators found the exclusion's conditions to be reasonable and sufficient. However, two comment commentators recommended that the agency impose additional limitations on the exclusion. One of these commentators argued that the exclusion would permit and possibly encourage banking entities to increase their risk exposures through the use of customer facilitation vehicles. And the agencies should minimize such risk exposures and promote risk monitoring and management. The agencies continue to believe that these vehicles do not expose banking entities to the types of risks, blah, blah, blah. Let me, let me scroll through here a little bit because this is super dry, guys. Here we go. This exclusion will similarly, or similarly allow banking entities to provide customer-oriented financial services through a vehicle when that vehicle's purpose is to facilitate 
a customer's exposure to those services. I'm just scrolling, everybody. The exclusion will, and this is where we get into the actual meat of it here. This is super dry, people. I realize that, but I, I really do think that this is something. The exclusion will, as proposed, require that the vehicle be formed by or at the request of the customer. So it's like CYA for the banks, right? They're covering their own asses. One commentator suggested that the agencies remove this requirement, arguing that it, it would inhibit a banking entity's ability to provide customers with services in a timely manner. Interesting. However, the agencies continue to believe that this requirement is an important component of the exclusion because it helps differentiate customer facilitation vehicles from covered funds that are organized and offered by the banking entity. And we know that covered funds fall under the Volcker rule or the Volcker rule. As stated in the 2020 proposal, this requirement will not preclude a banking entity from marketing its customer facilitation vehicle services or discussing with its customers prior to the formation of such vehicles. The potential benefits of structuring such services, services through a vehicle. Get into payment and settlement. One commentator recommended specifying that the exclusion only allow vehicles to be formed for extensions of intraday credit, payment, clearing, and settlement services, and only for purposes of operational efficiency. Pro providing flexibility enhances the utility of this exclusion. Specifically, the agencies noted that the purpose of this exclusion is to allow banking entities to provide customer oriented financial services through vehicles, providing customers with exposure to a transaction, investment strategy, or other service that the banking entities may provide to such customers directly, limiting the type of transaction, investment strategy, or service for which the customer facilitation vehicle may be formed would interfere with this purpose. Accordingly, the agencies are adopting this requirement as, as proposed. Now, this is saying that the uh, banking entity will only be able to rely on customer facilitation vehicle exclusion under certain conditions as stated above. As proposed, the exclusion would have permitted banking entities and their affiliates to acquire or ret ret uh, retain as principal an ownership interest in the issuer up to 0.5% of the issuer's outstanding ownership interests. Sounds like handing over whatever the, uh, the issuer of these facilitation vehicles, um, handing over some of that to the banks here just for um, solvency purposes. So I don't know how much, uh, this is super speculative, everybody. How much XRP does Ripple hold? Um, 55 billion or whatever it is. 0.5% of that. Super speculative, not saying that's what it is, but this customer facilitation vehicle just came about in January of this year, and it sure does line up a lot with this. Um, and I'm going to post both of these for you, both of these documents, this covered fund document about Ripple and this um, Federal Reserve document here. Complying with requirements. The proposed requirement that a customer facilitation vehicle must comply. So it looks like they're opening up and easing restrictions under things that were um, previously covered funds for, I don't want to say market making, but for the ability of utility. Um, I don't know what these are. It may not, not have anything to do with blockchain or digital assets, but like I said, I couldn't find anything about customer facilitation vehicle, customer facilitation, anything in banking. Um, that, that didn't originate before January. All right, I'm gonna keep moving on here. All right, so this is another uh, little article about the Volcker Rule, a key rule written in the wake of the financial crisis just got rolled back. I'm gonna keep going, because there was a really interesting one. This was on XRP Chat. Again, this Volcker Rule, why ban banks cannot hold crypto. Um, Agencies propose a new exclusion for a customer facilitation vehicle that is formed by or at the request of a customer of a banking entity for the purpose of providing the customer or its affiliates with exposure to a transaction, an investment strategy, or other service provided by the banking entity. 0.5% of the vehicle's ownership as, uh, interests. 
All right. This was actually kind of funny. I'm going to leave you guys. Um, well, first off, XRP is a vehicle currency, customer facilitation vehicle. That's probably a reach, but um, found it anyways. This is the big banks are back. The, Vol uh, the Volker V bound. The boys are back in town. Guess who got, just got back today? Them wild eyed bankers that had been away. Haven't changed that much to say, but man, I still think them banking cats are crazy. They were asking if credit default swaps were around, how they were, and where more derivatives could be found. The FDIC said they were living downtown, driving Wall Street crazy. So who or what brought the bat boys back to town? The FDIC undo some of the belts on the Volcker Rule straitjacket that kept banks from repeating 2008's final, uh, financial crisis. So some of the rules put into place are well, were to prevent another financial crisis, but we all know that we're in the middle of a financial crisis right now. Um, and we all know what, what utility, what blockchain has, what digital assets have. So obviously, in order for mainstream adoption to occur, a little bit of risk needs open back up again. Um, this is about derivatives here, and I'm going to leave you guys with this. Gold, don't talk about gold, gold. The last time this situation showed up, investors had the chance to make ridiculous gains. 4,558%. So the last time that a, a situation like this occurred, you can see where the gains are, uh, were, were to be made. I don't, obviously gold and sil silver are always nice to hold in a recession. Um, but I believe that it's, it's digital assets and it's digital assets across the board. So I hope you guys like this. I will post these links. I know that it was probably a little bit confusing. Whatever. Um, I'll do another video tomorrow that probably won't be as confusing. All right, later.